Pearl Harbor, our west coast became a potential combat zone. Living in that zone were more than 100,000 persons of Japanese ancestry, two-thirds of them American citizens, one-third aliens. We knew that some among them were potentially dangerous. Most were loyal. But no one knew what would happen among this concentrated population if Japanese forces should try to invade our shores. Military authorities therefore determined that all of them, citizens and aliens alike, would have to move. On December the war started, 42, early 42, I moved, I was kicked out <laughs> by the lady who thought I was Chinese, and I know there were many Chinese then who carried signs, I'm a Je Chinese American. I certainly couldn't carry a sign like that because I was not Chinese. I guess if I was, I'd be very happy to do it. <laughs> I really didn't know what I wanted to do when I left left uh, left Hawaii uh, was out of high school but I couldn't get any satisfaction living in Hawaii and when I came to California I still didn't know what I wanted to do the year was 1939 and worked in in a food market, food market, and about a year, and then I decided oh, there must be something. So I began looking for an art school to go to, but not quite sure as to whether 
that's what I wanted to do. But once I got started, I really enjoyed it immensely. Then, from there, and then a war broke out about a year and a half later. It changed all of our lives. Drastically. In fact, when Japanese Americans were interned, that meant over a hundred thousand people were, you know, pulled out of their homes and and I didn't really do much painting then. Neil approached me maybe a year and a half ago and uh, stopped here in the office and told me that he, he was uh, he asked me if, he, if I would uh, cooperate in a, in a portrait and I said I'd be glad to and then he explained that he was going to do a series of these portraits uh, in preparation for a show uh, uh, exhibiting uh, faces of the North Fork which sounded like an interesting undertaking to me. We came here To be with our son and grandchildren. There's, there's a lot of people we don't know in this area, and I just began to meet some. I met uh, David Capel, who is the mayor of uh, Greenpoint, who is the mayor of Greenpoint. I went to his office and uh, I saw a photograph in black and white of uh, William Capel and Leonard Bernstein. The photograph was hanging on his wall. And I went up to the photograph and I looked at, at the signature of the photographer and it was Ruth Orkin, who was a friend of ours. You know, we, we had some common background. Uh, he, he, was, he was active in, uh, in the record industry uh, uh, at the time that my father was a uh, performing musician, so we've had some nice conversations about that and reminiscences about uh, other people in the industry and in, in the art in the music world. Uh, and this was, photograph was taken at Columbia Records. Leonard Bernstein uh, recorded for Columbia, where I worked as director of design, and William Capel was the recording artist at Victor at RCA. Well, yeah, we got talking. He's, a, he's an easy person to talk to, very engaging yeah. and funny, you know, mm -hmm. which, uh, which I like. We got, had, we've had a lot of laughs together. But it was a very interesting discovery, you know, to discover that the mayor of Greenport was the son of William Capel. David said he was about four or five when his father died in an airplane crash somewhere in California. Uh, uh, in the process of, of talking with him, it came out that he was looking interested in suggestions of other people that would have an interesting face mm -hmm. and also an interesting story. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I gave him some suggestions and he followed them up. So I did a painting of David Capel and through David I met several other interesting people in Greenport. I asked him if he could guide me to uh, a uh, to a black person in Greenport. Uh, so he introduced me to Bessie Swan and I painted Bessie, a wonderful woman, great gospel singer. And then there are others.
and it went on that way. I, from David, I met uh, Judge Tadeshi. I painted Judge Tadeshi, and through him, I met others, and it just grew, you know. Then I discovered that what I was really doing was uh, I was uh, doing a collection of people uh, of various occupations, including a sergeant who lives in Meditat. He's with a police force, sergeant. He's a sergeant. Well, he also he took time to figure to consider not only the, the subject but also the the environment, the proper environment for the subject. You know, in my case, he he uh, he uh, chose the you know the, the uh, my antiques as a background. Uh, other people, my friend Doug Rogers in East Marion, uh, uh, he put him in a similar background of the kind of things that he collects. And Cliff Benfield from South Old is, has some harpoons in the background because he runs the uh, Lighthouse Museum up in South Old. Uh, you know, I thought that, that was a very, and, and Ray Van Etten, the, the uh, sergeant in the police department, had got him in uniform, you know, it's great. And it just went on and on. And each person uh, added something quite interesting into my study of uh, painting people in the North Fork. <laughs> And the area wasn't really that new to us because we lived on Shelter Island for almost 25 years. Let's see, I, I met Neil, it must have been the spring, early spring of 1996. We met in a health club on the South Fork uh, in Flanders just as you're entering the South Fork from Riverhead. Um, yeah, we, we met at a health club. And there are days Chris and I go down there and we, you know, we do our workouts. I wish my dad could see this now, which I laugh. <laughs> Many times we would see Neil working out, either he's on the, uh, on the weights, doing some weights. Next time we see him, we, He's in the pool doing laps. A few times we see him in the sauna and we, we get a sweat together. Um, all right, sir, can I head off? Mm -hmm. Our conversations led to what he's doing um, mm -hmm. at the time. And on many occasions, we were all, all three of us would work out together. You're not going to video record it, are you, Artie? Oh, uh, Chris, you're on air. Oh, shucks. <laughs> And Ian would always give us a warm greeting. He just seems such a congenial fella, you know, he's very congenial. Now, for a whole, whole change, uh, one, one like there, and one there. Like this? Yeah, like, something like that. Okay. We became the three amigos, the three of us. We would see each other so commonly that it just came to the point where we would call one another. Chris would call Neil and say, hey, Neil, are you going to the club, the health club? And Neil said, sure, what, what time are you going to be there? And many times we would just, the three of us would work, work out together. Neil's approach of defining portraits of people of the North Fork um, was to photograph them at all different angles. He would adjust the aperture of the camera to adjust the light so he, he can determine what type of shades he'd use when he would start painting his portraits. <laughs> he was just as meticulous with the photography as much as the portrait he was painting itself. I wish I was handsome enough. By watching him paint Chris's portrait, uh, I got to see the process he goes through from step one to um, the final product. Would you want to take a snap of me in a golf cart? Like one picture of that? To add to my little portrait? <laughs> like me all sitting in the seat and holding the cane like this? 
Certainly. Okay. okay. I'll grab it. Okay. I'll bring it in. Thanks, Sorry. Okay. Neil took an interest in Chris, you know, uh, you know, especially his circumstances. To keep us company. Chris was uh, a victim of a horrible automobile accident in 1994. He lost his uh, vision. Both optical nerves shot. And, uh, he also sustained right-sided neurological damage. How do you want to go about this? I'm not sure. Well. There's no one as brave as he is. He, he, was, he was really an inspiration. And Neil took such a liking to Chris. And his, just, just his Christmas. And just Chris being Chris. Um, began to elaborate on his project, uh, seeing his feeling, American Faces of the North Fork. And I mean, the light bulb hit for me. I says, you know, Neil, would you consider Chris as being a part of this um, exhibit? So Neil agreed to uh, paint a portrait of Chris. And, you know, you, you're able to really see the process he goes through when he does paint uh, the porches of people for this uh, certain project. There you go. Uh, thanks for the ride. Yeah, you're a heck of a cab driver. As long as you don't charge me $5,000, I'll be twice as happy. Uh, how do you like Zach with his behind right on my left? <laughs> because he's loving the ride. He's actually like, he's not practically kissing my ear. <laughs> I have the pictures. Uh -huh. Pictures I need, that is. Artie? Artie? You just have your camera with you? Yep, we're on. Okay, because what I'll do is I'll shake up. Uh, later. I uh, know you want to get off for a minute? Yep, I'll I will. I'll shut this off. Uh-oh. Nothing bad. Neil? Oh, oh. And Jake? Yeah. Thanks a whole bunch, Neil. I think you're terrific. <laughs> Oh, 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 idea to to include Chris into this collection of not of American faces in a North form and I think I did question you as to whether we could use Chris into this in this show because I'm calling it seeing his feeling and what does that do with Chris? Is it well? Feeling is not just seeing. Yeah. Ah, then that gave us a clue. And I, I like that. I like the, <clears throat> the combination of. Uh, I like the idea of of showing someone who cannot see. Chris should be interesting. It should be interesting to paint. His left eye is usually closed. Have you noticed that? And his right eye is just uh, opens wider than the left, if I'm, if I'm correct. But his mouth is very active. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun, I must say. He's... Uh, Hey, can you tell this is a dark glasses here? 
Yeah, you could. Huh? Yeah. Well, I have to. Some I have to. Detail. I have to define it. Yeah. Yeah. Some more detail. A little bit more. Yes. Work. Yeah. And this, I think, helps, right? Yes. Yeah, that's what I said during yeah. the shoot. Um, yes. You see that red end? And yeah. Mm hmm. Fold it up like that, you know? That's yes. The walking cane. Yes. Just seeing like it. No doubt. Then I have to finish my spruce here and the evergreen that they have back in the backyard and some flowers which I will uh, invent mm -hmm. to give a sense of smell. You know, smelling is feeling, and uh, sound, sound of birds. No, I don't think I'll, as long as he's outdoors, he can hear a lot of nature sounds, sounds from nature. Huh? <clears throat> well, we'll see what happens. <laughs>